A bomber that isn't even in full service yet is already forcing the entire U.S. fleet to rethink its job. How does a brand new stealth jet show up and make the B-1, the B-2, and eventually even the B-52 shift rolls overnight? This is how the B-21 Raider will replace every bomber in the U.S. military. Starting with the why. The goal was simple. Build one bomber that can do the hardest job by itself. It should take off from secure bases, cross oceans, slip through the toughest air defenses, hit key targets on the first night, then land, refuel, and do it again. It also has to be affordable enough to buy in real numbers, tough enough to fly from more places, and smart enough to upgrade as threats change. That's what the B-21 is built to do. The B-20 showed that stealth works. It got past radars designed for older wars and hit high-value targets without warning. But it came from another era when computers were slow, coatings were fussy, and most of the stealth focus was from the front. Today, defenses aren't a line on a map. They're a dome of sensors talking to each other from every direction. The B-21 is made for that world. Its shape and materials are tuned for true 360-degree stealth, shedding radar energy from the front, back, sides, above, and below. The process starts on supercomputers. The B-2 was drawn, wind-tunneled, and refined in flight. The B-21 was designed digitally first, with millions of simulations AI fine-tuned every curve and even where fasteners go so it's hard to detect across radar, heat, and sound. The result is a radar return people compare to a mosquito. In a sky full of clutter and jamming, that's almost impossible to pick out. Size helps too. The B-21 is smaller than the B-2, about a 132-foot wingspan instead of 172. Less surface area means fewer chances for radar to bounce back. A more compact jet also fits more places, shorter runways, tighter hangars, hotter airfields. And while the B-2's black skin looked iconic, it needed constant, climate-controlled care. The B-21's advanced composites bake stealth into the structure. They're lighter, tougher, and need less maintenance. That lighter color you see in photos isn't a style choice. It's how the materials work. Money matters just as much as stealth. The B-2's biggest headache wasn't enemy missiles. It was the price tag. We only built 21, so the huge development bill got split across a tiny fleet and pushed the cost past $2 billion per jet. The B-21 was built to dodge that trap. It targets under $700 million a copy, and the plan is to buy at least 100. Thanks to digital manufacturing, what engineers model is basically what rolls off the line. Northrop says the normal double-digit rework dropped to about 1%. That's real-time saved, fewer do-overs, and how you turn a stealth bomber from a boutique toy into the backbone of the force. On the basics, the Raider is a two-engine flying wing with two crew, cruising around Mach 0.8 near 50,000 feet. It carries about 20,000 pounds of weapons inside. Sure, that's less than a B-2 on paper, but modern precision makes that a non-issue. It can drop JDAMs on fixed targets, fire JASM for long-range strikes, and use LRASM to hit ships. It'll also carry the B-61 nuclear bomb and the AGM-181 long-range standoff missile to keep the nuclear deterrent sharp. And when the target is buried deep, a command bunker or tunnel system it can haul the 30,000-pound Massive Ordnance Penetrator Translation. Hiding underground isn't a plan. Range is the other big deal. The B-21's combat radius lets it take off from secure bases and still reach deep into defended airspace. If tankers are in play, it goes even farther. If they're not, bad weather, heavy threats, or a chaotic day, it still gets there. That independence is how you make sure the first punch lands when it counts. Where the Raider really pulls away from the Spirit is what it does while it's inside enemy airspace. The B-2 was a silent knife. Slip in, hit the target, slip out. 
the B-21 is a stealthy sensor shooter. It fuses its own radar and passive sensors with intel from elsewhere, then shares a clean picture back to the fight without giving itself away. That turns a bomber into a quiet quarterback. It can cue other shooters, manage loyal wingman drones to scout or jam, launch its own weapons, then pivot mid-mission as the situation updates. In modern combat, where air, land, sea, space, and cyber all overlap, being a hidden node is as deadly as the bomb bay. And yes, it's optionally manned. Most missions will still fly with pilots. Some decisions at intercontinental range need humans. But the architecture lets software take over smart chunks of the job autonomy can handle routine tasks, control drone swarms, or keep executing when comms are jammed. Crews can dial in how much to hand off. And if a mission ever gets too risky for people, there's a path to send the jet alone. None of this would matter if the jet only existed in slides. It doesn't. The first B-21 rolled out in December 2022 and flew on November 10, 2023, then settled into a steady test rhythm at Edwards Air Force Base by late 2024. Three airframes were in the program, one flying a couple times a week while the others knocked out ground tests. The Air Force greenlit low-rate production on January 23, 2024, so they're building jets while testing continues. In September 2025, a second B-21 joined the flight side at Edwards and jumped straight into weapons and mission systems work. That's the shift you need to go from does it fly to can it fight. Digital modeling has helped here. When predictions match reality, you move faster. The bases are gearing up too. Ellsworth in South Dakota will host the first operational squadron and the training unit construction ramps in fiscal 2026. So the jet has the hangars, simulators, and support it needs. Tinker in Oklahoma will run sustainment. Edwards keeps leading the tests. As squadrons stand up, expect Dias in Texas and Whiteman in Missouri to join the rotation as the bomber force reshapes. The plan is simple. The B-21 becomes half the fleet, paired with upgraded B-52Js. One sneaks in and opens the door. The other loiters with a big magazine and keeps pressure on from outside. So what happens to the rest? The B-1B worked hard as a conventional hauler after its nuclear tasking ended. Fast, heavy, reliable during long wars. But age and maintenance are catching up. Those will retire through the 2030s as raiders arrive. The B-2 still brings a special mix of stealth and payload, and it's gotten smarter with new sensors and comms. But the tiny fleet and high hourly cost make it a boutique tool. It likely bows out in the 2030s as B-21 units come online. The B-52 isn't leaving anytime soon. With new engines, radar, and weapons, it becomes the B-52J and handles standoff strikes, maritime work, and long presence where stealth isn't the key. Think two-type team for the next couple decades. Raiders inside the threat ring, buffs outside it. The weapons load tells the same story. Old bombers needed volume because guidance was crude. Now it's about the right mix. The B-21 can drop JDAMs through weather using its own mapping radar, fire JASM ear from well outside air defenses, and use LRASM to hunt at sea. On the nuclear side, it fields the flexible B-61 and the LRSO cruise missile to hold tough targets at risk without overflying them. Tie that to a jet that quietly sinks with satellites, fighters, Navy shooters and ground units, and you've got more than a bomber. You've got a stealthy flying kill chain. Stealth used to mean stay silent. The B-21 can talk without giving itself away. Its ESA radar builds fast, clean maps, searches for air and sea targets, shrugs off jamming, and updates quickly so crews see the fight as it changes. Secure data links share that picture to whoever needs it. Designed to survive heavy electronic warfare. If GPS is jammed or spoofed, radar-aided navigation and targeting keep the accuracy. 
That's how you hold precision when space gets messy. You can see the strategy. China has spent 20 years building a coastal fence of long-range missiles, layered radars, mobile SAMs, and modern fighters. Russia ringed key areas with S-400s and S-500s. Those networks are real and dangerous. The B-21 doesn't try to smash through, it sidesteps by not appearing on the scope. If you can't see it, you can't track it. If you can't track it, you can't shoot it. And if your safest bunker isn't safe, you think twice before starting a fight. That's deterrence through quiet strength. Programs like this also live or die on sustainment. The Air Force learned a hard truth from the B-2. If a stealth jet is too finicky to maintain, you won't use it when it counts. The B-21 fixes that from the start. Its open systems design means you can plug in new sensors, weapons, or electronic warfare gear without tearing up the whole airplane. Line replaceable units swap fast. Crews can try a repair on a digital twin before touching the real jet. And because the Raider is smaller and far less picky about climate-controlled hangars, you can spread it out across more bases. That alone makes an enemy's targeting plan fall apart. A bomber tied to a couple of pristine shelters is easy to find. A bomber that can operate from lots of places, turn quickly, and keep moving is a nightmare. That urgency is showing in testing. When the second B-21 reached Edwards in September 2025, the Air Force Chief of Staff said it plainly. More test jets mean faster fielding. The quicker you move from basic flight checks to weapons drops to full mission systems, the sooner a squadron stops being a slide and starts being real. Low-rate production has already begun, and Ellsworth is lined up for the first operational unit once testing signs off. The groundwork isn't casual either. Construction, training pipelines, sims, spare parts, shelters, those all start years before the first jet parks on the ramp. They're happening now because the world isn't pausing for anyone. And if you think this is just about shiny new hardware, look at the B-2's recent record. It was still hitting deeply buried nuclear sites with massive ordnance penetrators decades into its service, exactly what it was built to do. That was possible because crews kept the spirit current with better comms, navigation, targeting, and a sustainment rhythm that let a tiny fleet punch way above its size. The B-21 is built to take that mission and widen it. It won't just crack the door. It will map the whole building, pass that picture to the rest of the force, and hold the corridor open long enough for the follow-on waves to finish the job. There's a cultural piece here, too. The Air Force didn't run this program through the usual slow pipelines. It put the Rapid Capabilities Office in charge to keep the chain of command short and the decision loop tight. It kept many details classified so the engineering could move without daily grandstanding. And it selected a design that reused lessons from the F-35 where it made sense, down to engine lineage and supplier networks so logistics wouldn't have to invent a new religion for every part. Paying attention to those unglamorous choices is why the jet is flying, why production is starting, and why bases are pouring concrete instead of ink. Here's the bottom line. The B-21 Raider isn't just replacing a bomber. It's replacing the old way of doing business. The B-1 was all about speed and volume. The Raider brings stealth and efficiency, slipping in, hitting the target clean, and slipping out without needing a whole escort package to clear the way. The B-2 proved deep strike stealth, but in tiny numbers with fussy upkeep. The Raider gives you that same penetration in real, sustainable quantities. And the B-52 will keep doing what it does best, range and standoff, while the Raider handles the ugly inside work. Put it together, and you get a simpler, tougher, more flexible force. Think of a first light launch. One B-21 taxis out, while another crew runs sims next door. Tankers set tracks over open water. The jet builds its own map quietly. Doors stay shut until the last second, and radios stay silent unless needed. Weapons come off clean, the bomber turns cold, 
and disappears the way it arrived. Somewhere else, a B-52J starts a long standoff run, firing cruise missiles into lanes the raider just opened. A destroyer suddenly has targeting data it didn't have 10 seconds ago. A drone swarm shifts corridors and floods a radar with noise. No big announcement, just a network doing its job. Why does the B-21 exist? Because stealth, range, and precision still decide the first minutes of a modern fight. Because you can't bolt the future onto an airframe that wasn't built for it, because mass matters, and the only way to buy mass is to control cost. And because deterrence isn't a speech, it's making an adversary believe, for good reason, that picking a fight ends badly. So a new bomber rolls out at Plant 42, lifts into the California sky, and flies a test card that looks routine on purpose. It's smaller than the last one, smarter by design, and built to whisper on the network. Soon it'll sit on a snowy ramp in South Dakota and crews will treat it like any other jet. That's the goal. When a sixth gen machine becomes normal, strategy shifts. And that's why it'll stand at the center of the bomber force. Not because it makes the old jets look bad, but because it makes everything around them work better. The B-21 reaches farther from safer bases, survives longer in harder air, costs less to keep ready and plugs into the fight like a router, not a radio, until someone shows a cheaper, tougher way to move that much precision across that much distance through that much defense and do it again tomorrow. The Raider keeps the top seat. If you want more clear, no-nonsense breakdowns like this, hit subscribe so you don't miss the next deep dive.